Don't know which way to go, does it? Holy cannoli, look at that. What's up, Jason? Jason in the house. Look at that relay back there. So, if you notice on that PMH, hey, Mike, that PMH back there is hooked up to nothing but a light bulb. I think I blew the bulb out. So, as we're getting the wheel turning, I'll replace that light bulb. All right, we'll replace that light bulb. And then, um, so you can see how that compass is reacting. And then this one here is the driver PMH. So this one's hooked up to a 12 volt battery back there. The re relay is hooked up to a 12 volt battery, which is back there. That 12 volt battery is hooked up to my um, resistance wire. So I'm controlling the current going into my relay, okay? And I'm also controlling the current with this rheostat going into my driver. So right here, I'm just gonna set this down for a second. And I am going to just give this thing a little nudge. And something I, I realized uniquely is that let me get it going just a little bit. I just think, let me just get it going. And Thanks, Chase. So um, when it slows down, now I have everything dialed down right now. So we're looking at Rio Stats got, got a big chunk of resistance. I don't know the resistance. I haven't checked it on this whole Rio Stat, but there, there I am. It's, it's, so I'm killing the current. And then over here, I got all this resistance wire and I'm killing the current on the relay to let it drive slow. So let's just let it drive slow there for a second. I'm gonna take a pee break. It should keep turning. If not, I'll have to make some adjustments, adjustments either with the, most likely the relay. The relay controls the pulse, controls the, the, um, the heartbeat that's going into that PMH. So right now, what you're looking at, to me, is pretty cool because this is not, it's going off, it's making contact every other magnet. Now, see if it's slowing down, I'm going to have to make a little adjustment to keep it going. You can see the relays, or the, uh, all right, stopped. All right, so we're going to add or take away some resistance. See the? See a little spark. All right, look, so the wheel's really, really, look what it's doing on its own right now. So right now the wheel is doing its own little, it's, it's excited, it, it wants a turn. Look at it, look at it, <laughs> look at that thing. It wants, it wants to go. I know if I nudge it, it'll go. Let's see what it does on its own. So if I add more power to the, um, to over here, let's see what we can do. We'll add, we'll just go over here. Let's give it a little, a little nudge. Let me go this way with the nudge. Let's just see what it does. So notice this PMH here that, that only has a, has a, it doesn't have a load on it yet, but you can see it's turning around. So it shows you that the poles are flipping in that PMH, okay? This one here is, is having an event. You can see by the compass that it's only going forward and back in that quarter fashion. So it's being pulsed. There's an event going there. Over there, the coils are flopping poles. 
So they're allowing your Tesla spin right there. There goes your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful induction by that little generator right there. Cool stuff. So right now we can adjust stuff and make it go faster. We can adjust it to go slow, but I guess what I wanted to slow it down a little bit because I'm fascinated that I can get make that relay go so slow that it barely looks like it's moving and this thing turns just like a like a Rolex, no stopping. It just smoothly turns. So let's let's dial down again. And I'm gonna just let you sit here with that face in there. And I don't wanna get shocked, so I'm just. This Rio stat will hurt you. Rio stat will hurt you. <laughs> So now we'll look at the relay. Barely moving. Wheel's got a smooth turn about it. To me, it reminds me of a Rolex watch. So over here, you can see we're having an event. Pulse, pulse, pulse. We're skipping every other magnet. So we're only firing when this and that are lined up with the opposing magnets approaching it. And here's where the fun starts. So uh, let, me, uh, let me dial this thing up a little bit. So now we're gonna, we're gonna add less resistance to the, to the relay, which will make the relay start moving. Do you see that relay starts moving now? Now you see movement, right? Now let me go ahead and add less resistance to the to the driving PMH. We'll let that sit right there. And you see the action is in the relay right now. I still have to balance his relay out more. Something happened. I don't know what the heck happened. guys family stuff going on just want to say shout out to everybody um where we go from here all right so better control on the relay the resistance to the relay matters 
Um, the, that battery by itself takes power. So we're gonna hook that battery up to one is a meter for voltage and a meter for, um, for amperage. And we'll figure out what watts it takes based on, um, I guess this resistance I have set up here, I'll just get a potentiometer, all right? Or no, another rheostat. So another rheostat like this, we'll be controlling that. So I think the key, he, the key thing here is, is that everything's variable, variable. So I'll, uh, the variable isness of the relay is important to make that relay snappier. Like right now I'm disconnecting it. I'm gonna reconnect it. So I just made it less resistance. Another thing is too, you gotta to like find yourself in the sweet spot. Like I just pushed it real quick. Let's see if we can get that sweet spot. There it is. Had to give it a little shove. What the heck? All right, so. First casualty. Melted the wire. Coming through. <laughs> Coming through the resistance wire. Let's put you back over there for a second. Let me replace that wire. Put a fresh one. So we're talking about like the battery that is for this relay. We'll put, we'll put a voltmeter on it. We'll put a, um, a current meter on it. And then we'll do the same thing with the battery that um, we're using for the PMH to drive it. We'll put voltmeter on it. We'll put a current meter on it. And then we'll start to um, put some coils around the wheel and put some resistance on it. Then we'll look to see if lens law shows up. And if it does, we'll see that in proof that the current will come up, up more out of the battery for the PMH driving because the strain on the wheel, according to lens law, should, should slow down the wheel and then more current would have to be added to the driver to overcome that. And we're gonna go through that and see if it appears. I, I believe it will. But uh, with Ed's PMHs, maybe we can overcome some of that resistance. I took as best resistance I can out of this heavy-ass wheel. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, whoa. Oh, yeah. Melting stuff everywhere. So, took a lot of resistance out of this. And, oh, shit. What the fuck? PMH has got stuck to the magnet. Vinny, cut it out. All right. Woo, we're having all kinds of issues here. So, need another wire. Let's go back to this. So, back to what I was saying is, um, we'll check everything. And right now, I'm going to get this thing running again. I got a lot of ideas. Okay. So right now, just the relay is on. I think it is. Should be. Hang tight, guys. I'm missing a connection somewhere.
This guy's got to go. What happened? I lose everybody? All right, so now I got the connection going. Let me go ahead and collect. Connect. The rear stat. I'm having issues over here because the PMH is locked up to the wheel as soon as I connect it. Burning up stuff all over the place. All right. So we finally got the damn wheel turning. So we'll get it dialed in. We'll uh, control the speed, which I showed you. We can run it slow. We can run it fast. So that's putting a Rio stat to the PMH, the driver. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put, oh, I, hey, Adam, I burned out one of the, them stupid wires. I'm going to make them all go bye-bye. That the, Those wires are running to the resistance wire because if you control the resistance going into the power going into the relay, the relay um, controls the pulse that goes into the PMH. The PMH goes to this rheostat right there, and I'm controlling the, um, the voltage that's going into the PMH. So right now we're firing on every other magnet. So we're, we're out of 24 magnets on the wheel, we're only firing 12 times. So right now, 12 times I'm only firing with one PMH. The cool thing is that the compass on this PMH, the driver, is showing an event. It's just getting pulsed. Boom, 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 boom. So if you count those with the revolutions, uh, if you see the yellow, the yellows are the north. So we can at least show that that's north pole. That compass over there to that PMH is spinning. So it's showing an induction going on between the two uh, coils and the coils are flipping their poles and that's just connected to a light bulb which I blew out so um, let me see if I can hook that up to another light bulb and we'll see that flash so that one shows the action that's going on to the other PMH which is really cool Bear with me, just put a light bulb over here. Trying to.
Nah, it keeps blowing out the light bulb. So, that ain't working out for me. I keep blowing the light bulb. So it must be a, what I'm, what I'm excited for now is with the start of this and the wheels turning, I'm not turning anymore. At least it's turning on its own, right? Using two batteries, 12 volt battery, and then a little tiny 12 volt battery. Here. That's a seven amp hour. And I, that's the big deep cycle one. That one down there. So the way I charge these magnets now is I put the red, the south pole of the battery on the north side and I just tap the two and they charge like Superman strength. So what I'm thinking now is what's going on before I used to use a PMH and I used to put it up to and touch and it would do it. So now I'm thinking that every time this thing pulses and fires, the small group, the PMH that's in front of it is going to go into an individual small capacitor. So that means that there's 24 magnets. So there'll be 24 small capacitors. Now, this is going to be the thing. The capacitors, however small they are, I want to build a capacitor on the inside. I want to start off with something. This fits perfectly underneath that center. So that means we're going to build electrostatic capacitance. Now, if you look at that, that inside is about the size of a 10-inch a 10 inch dinner plate. Think about with that being that tall, how many rings that I could put around of a dielectric and a, and a conductor. So that means the inside of this wheel here does not need any power hookup because these little PMHs right now are firing off of this PMH that's driving it. Cool beans. I appreciate that, Jason. Yeah, that's the other part too is there, there's, there's like an impedance thing going on here. So when you take the back end and put an adjustment right here, I didn't even talk about it, just a little pressure and I could speed up. So there's an adjustment there. Good heads up there, Jace. Look how that thing's turning. Flopping its poles. Yeah, I know. This is just a rough one, man. This is cool as hell because this is what's on the wall, at least gallons. So he used the same thing. Now it's going to get even better. Because what I'm going to do is now I'm only hitting 12 times on one full circle. So I'm going to double its speed by using two PMHs. And the other PMH is going to be a contact on this side. So this will be a double throw. So on that side, it'll be hitting north-south exactly in charging. And then on the half stroke, which you're getting now, this one will be firing the same way. So we'll be getting double We'll get double speed. It'll, it'll get faster. Make the adjustments on the relay. And then start building the capacitance on the inside of the wheel. So little capacitors around the whole outside to each one of these. To each one of these will be a capacitor, a little tiny capacitor. And then from there, that's going to go to the big section there in the center. And that's going to be something like this, but just many turns. Like I'm thinking like the, the super capacitors where they don't release all the way. They don't release all the way. Give me a second here. I got to take a little key break. My 
Brohams. You guys want to watch the relay in action? Well, I can tell you already that I'm getting another one of these wires down. Let me add some more resistance. There we go. So I added more resistance, so it slows down the reaction. What happens at the relay, when you add more resistance, these coils won't try to move themselves faster. They'll slow down and give them more, a little more lag. So there's some good learning curves for me right now with the resistor. So right now I knocked down the resistance instead of burning up the wire because that shitty wire I got right there is real hot right now. So you can see the speed went down. Now let's do this. You see the speed it's going right now, right? They're not banging as bad as they are. So let's add more resistance to the relay. Let's go up the wire a little bit. Here we go. Now let's look at it. So now the magnets got a lot more resistance. Oh, by the way, not the magnets, I mean the relay. These relay are 20 gauge wire. Each spool is 400 turns and each one has four ohms resistance. And I got them wired together. There you go. So it just stopped. We added so much resistance. Let's see if it goes the other way nope we just locked up over here so give me a second let's uh let's take off power so you just gotta watch these all these experiments are good you gotta add a little spacer behind the pmh there we go we're good now you're gonna lock up no more so let me add let's go back add less resistance you can see that just sparked. Now we'll go ahead and put the power back on for the for the driver for the PMH. And now let's try spinning it that way. So I added more resistance to the relay, not to the driver not to the pmh <clears throat> so we're still pulling the same induction on this relay on this pmh but we added resistance to the relay and you can see how it slowed down now let's stop it and see if it goes the other way let's see if it dances back and forth So now it's going the opposite way. So you can see how slow we're going. Got a nice smooth little kickback on the relay. No, because it just burnt up the wires right here. So I got to take the less resistance. Let me get the resistance down over here on the relay. And now you'll see that. Let me get it. Let me get it going and just see if it just takes over from there. At some point, it's you see we got the light kicking on. Let's watch the relay. 
and see if it how much it slows down. Once I get that relay tuned in, we'll be able to get the speed better. So that means I got too much going on over here. I got to dampen it down, just too much. Them coils are too strong. Or we might be going the wrong way. Let's just see if this way goes better. make a little adjustment on the relay because it gets a little whacked out there so yeah i gotta i gotta fine tune this but good guys we're we got this thing moving along right I know, one thing at a time. Right now, the damn wheels. Sorry guys, my power died. Not much. We're only running half a stroke and one PMH. So it's you can't really put a load on it. You got to kind of you got to kind of uh, get the other half a stroke going and then we'll check the torque. But it ain't turning too good that way. Seems like it turns better that way. Yeah, you guys got that right. We're pulsating DC current. We're also creating AC current. So you come out of the PMH and you got AC current. So what are we going to do with AC current and DC current? Well, you can make a satchable reactor.
Compass is still running. So, hear me out. So, if every time we'll have two PMHs running, and if every time each one of these PMHs, 24 turns per cycle, we'll have every time a PMH is fired into a pair of magnets, its capacitor will pulse inside the master capacitor, which would be the center of this. So just round and round and round and round, dielectric and a conductor plate for a massive amount of static collection. Massive amount. Scary. I'm almost getting scared thinking about how I can get hurt with this. It, this can't get hurt here, but you can get hurt with what I'm saying because that right there will have a discharge that'll be... Um, where I don't want to be around. So, but I see it now because without adding power, the inductiveness of these magnets are, these magnets are acting, say, like a crystal. And the magnets that are like a crystal are saturated. The induction that's going on between the this iron and this, or this field magnet and, and, the, and the magnet, is creating a skin effect on top of the PMH, the magnets, the pair. And that skin effect, when it makes and breaks the iron, it'll send a pulse into that capacitor into the master capacitor, which will be a, a giant. Now I want to build that so it's set up like a super capacitor where it doesn't release all of its energy. It stores it up. This is going to be pretty, I don't know if it works, but it'll be pretty cool to start setting everything inward into the center of this wheel because you'll have the fact that we're going to pulse rate this faster. I know we can get this. This is, this is my projected speed that we're going to get this wheel. Let me see. So, so this is the speed we're going to look for. Okay, I got to disconnect it right now. So this is the speed we're going to look for. If I was guessing, I'm going to buy me a little odometer thing, RPM thing. Um, I, I'm thinking 100, 200 turns, maybe 500 turns per minute. I, I don't know. So that speed is what we're going to accomplish with the relay. Now the relay... It's going to have to be really tuned in. I mean, dialed in. And the way to dial the relay in is that we'll go forward and back, forward and back with springs. So the springs makes the events a little um, stickamy. So the stickamy is like the contact over here sticks, so it throws the wheel. The contact on the, the second row throws the wheel. And, and the balance... Because I, I have that relay. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that, that relay. I'm back. You guys there? That relay has a magnetic bar on the back. Heavy weight. Plus, it creates it like it's a PMH. So it makes it really reactive. So this here, I believe was in inside Ed's box that he shows in that picture. Where is that damn picture? So in that box, because it looks big enough, 
in that box. That relay is in that box. And that's the same size relay that's on Ed's um, wall. Same size. I got the same. Uh, by the way, these coils, these copper coils with these half inch or these are um, three quarter inch slugs were built by Scott Russell, the uh, made by one man channel. He uh, is a friend of mine and uh, he was here. And when we first, he was so fast fascinated by the wheel when I first had it set up, he came here and we both figured out how to get the wheel turning off a of PMH. But back then the resistance in the wheel with the, with the motor block I was using was so much, it, it, it was a tough, daunting task, but we accomplished it. And I never followed it from there because it was such a daunting task, but with taking the resistance, mo most of it out of the wheel, um, it, uh, it's now time to get back, especially now I need something turning the wheel. And I really don't want electric motor or anything turning the wheel. We're creating our own turning the wheel, take power in. We can figure out what power is, power in now is, and then we'll figure out power out and we'll go through a lot of other avenues. Let me get you back on this thing here. I got some cool shit to cover with you guys. Uh, this wheel's been turning forever. I, one thing we did notice now so far, at least on making this video, that that resistance wire going into the re, the, the relay, it, um, it really helps manage the speed of the wheel. It ain't just the induction that's going on in the... Um, there's a few things. It really is. All right, so right now we are... I think we're connected. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. See what I mean? So these wires won't be on my next video. I'll never use these wires again on this wheel. Sorry, Ed. I apologize. <laughs> Let me get that son of a bitch gone. It's all right. If I keep burning them up, I won't have any left. Here we go. I hear some action. Did you hear that? Let's watch that. That was pretty damn cool. Watch the relay when I, I'm gonna disconnect it and then connect it. Disconnect it, connect it. So that's, when it's like that, it disconnects the back part of that, um, that contact. So right now it's pulled up. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect the um, PMH connection. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. So inside that box, I believe Ed has that relay. Cause that relay is up on his wall. And I'm going to break out my pictures when I was at Coral Castle. And that box right there is his relay. He's holding that relay down with that bar going across and the tie wire to there. He's feeding that relay through the wire that comes down. And you can see the wire comes up and it goes to one of those bottles up there there's two bottles up there. there's one there and there's one back behind it back there where the white covering is is where there's a concaved area in the cement that he made that he cemented the um, motor block to the coral he has a concave area out there for uh two six volt batteries back then the batteries for cars weren't 12 volt they were six volt and he had the space for two batteries and he had them back behind there it'd be no different than me taking mr 
minion and sticking them up there. Except for I just knocked off the wire to the battery to the relay, so I'll put that back on. He's creating minions, creating stuff. Let it go on its own. Leave the wheel build on its own. What's it doing on its own? Anyway, guys, cool shit. Hopefully you appreciate the, uh, the endurance, if we're going to call it, persistence in the search of Edley Scallon. Edley Scallon opened up many people's thoughts, especially, especially that guy out there, Angus Wangus. What a beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful guy. I mean, I don't know him or know of him, but Mr. Angus Wangus, uh, he was into lots of parts of Ed. And then when I first started seven years ago, I um, I got into Angus Wangus and I got into another guy called Mr. Too Tough. And abundant, you know Angus? Man, you know, I really respect Mr. Angus Wangus and Mr. Too Tough. Mr. Too Tough had made the Angus Wangus the wheel, the PMHs, he's spinning it. Check out his channel, Mr. Too Tough. Love his voice, too. Must be from Texas. So, um, yeah, they, 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 you know, with Edley Scallon, I'll tell you what. Uh, one thing I notice is certain people out there, what they do is they keep the torch going for Edley Scallon. Because there's more than a rock garden going on over there. And, um... That wheel's got to be running for what, guys? At least an hour by now? Another thing is, I'm going to get into this. I was just telling my buddy Scott from uh, Made by One Man. Him and I were on the phone. I told him I got the wheel going again. And he couldn't believe that I got this heavy-ass wheel turning. and Because his is like, I don't know, nine inches, if that, eight inches, six inches. It's itty bitty, but it turns like a sucker. Um, there's a picture here of Ed. Where is it? There's a picture of Ed that I have where it shows Ed at work. And what I'm going to do for my boy Scott. So I'm looking for the picture, and Ed's standing next to a piece of, uh, like a tree branch. You guys know what, vi what picture I'm talking about? And it says, Ed at work, picture? You guys know what picture? So that picture, I call that the yoke, because it has a hole cut out at the other end of it and it has a metal pipe going through the y part of it it's shaped like a y and damn it man i cannot find that picture but um i'm gonna build one and it's a solenoid and it kind of pulls in what uh scott made by one man was talking about with ed sculpting that uh Running off, if you had a relay or, or yeah, uh, any other relay coming off of here, you could use that as a working device for anything. Just whatever frequency you needed to do. And that goes out to like Ed's um, tripods. If you were out at the tripods, like a car relay, if you were out at the tripod and Ed was out there, say, sculpting something. Tripod's going to be over whatever big stone he's pulled out. 
he, if he wants to shape it or, or shape it like the Egyptians did with the obelisk. While it's down, he builds a trench around the obelisk. While it's down, he starts to shape it and does all he wants to do to it. Then he has to break it free and get it out. So with, the, um, with this, like a relay, he's able to um, create, the, it, like a jackhammer, for instance, a chisel for another, a small little chisel could come off of that, and pretty much just that alone by this turning, and this charging back the battery banks of each um, section he was working in it is a pretty good, a pretty good assumption what he could have been doing when he was working the stone, because I kind of had to disagree in the beginning with him, but. I kind of realized if you go back in some of the history of Edley Scallon, they talk about when he filed for a patent and then he was at the first location. So that means this wheel lands at the first location. Okay. So not at the second location, at the first location. So he already had the wheel at the first location. So the first, the second location, he moved there 1923. I think it was 1923 he moved to the new location. Before he moved to the new location and bought the new property, he filed for the patent. He also got a beat down. And they say that's why he moved from that location to another one because the neighborhood was rough. Well, could have been, but he wouldn't let the patent uh, agents take the, the setup. But I'm pretty sure what they did was took notes, what everything that they thought, and he probably didn't show them everything, but they probably took the notes back, gave it to the military, I'm sure, or whoever, so be it. And, and, um, and until he died is when the Army Corps engineers came in and protected it from being robbed. Why were they caring about him being robbed at that place is nothing more than a rock stone. So there was some stuff going on there, sort of like with Tesla, you know what I mean? Where did he really die by himself or was did he get induced and died? And then the military just took his or somebody took his his paperwork. Enough about my little Ed tangent and Tesla. But there's a um, lot, of, lot of stuff going on here. And we'll get past the wheel just turning. We'll get past, we'll get to a speed. Remember, we're going to have to find a speed that's for the Schumann residence. Remember, we, remember I talked about this, is that we're going to be pulsing. We're going to be catching the Schumann residence in the ground and the air. So we're going to need to have the wheel turning to that frequency. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Abundant. What's your question? Then, then. I think Mr. Abundant said he had a question, so we'll answer that when he types it in. Um... Okay, so the ones that I, um, I didn't paint them yellow. I put, I got yellow iron bar mar marker crayon, and those are the north pole. Each one of those are north. It's kind of good for all of us to kind of get a reference point. I did it for me for reference for setting up all three of those things. I have the two... On the relay, the two on that PMH and the two on that PMH all lined up identically right now. So when this relay goes off, it's pulse and everything how it wants it. Now, I know I can move that relay over a little left, a little right, and I can gain speed as well. So there's another variable that's going to happen there in the mix of things is, is, is getting the speed that I'm going to need. So I'll get a um, RPM counter. 
and uh, attack all, attack counter, and 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 then we'll figure out what um, what speed do we need to be turning? Cause this thing will hum. This is a freaking wheel uh, uh, bearing it, uh, on a car, so it's made to spin, right? So yeah. So basically, we're going to get it to the speed need for the Schumann residence. And you're welcome, Abundant. 27, Mr. Adams says the run. Well, that's what we, we're going to be in the 27 to 30 range. There's a little stretchy meme there, up and down. And we'll have terrible, terrible. Everything needs to be adjustable. Trust me, guys. I'm realizing that in this build. So we started with getting the wheel back together. Tesla said 432. Well, 432. So 432 times per second. Well, we can do a harmonic of that, can't we? We can cut that in half. We can make it 216. We can make it to 216 and then we can go from there and make half of 216 and go 108. Can we not? No, I'm trying to take edge to wheel. My, uh, I, I not only went through the experience of learning about magnetism, induction, electrostatic, um, and some about plasma and vacuum, that now um, I'm interested now in creating it by the pulse of the wheel. The wheel's turning from that one single PMH. And the thing here to do, I think, in my own mind is to keep going. So to keep stretching, asking more questions, challenging myself, not only to learn more, to get the wheel turning, to tap into the ground and to the air Schumann uh, frequency by using electrostatics to the ground and electrostatics to the air. That's, that's kind of where I'm heading with the whole thing. And it's not so much of the, not the uh, lens law and uh, electromagnetism, other than the fact that the wheel's turning. I can do anything I want off that pulse. Once I get the frequency, we have, we have um, some good stuff here. This is some good, good, solid. Learning about, uh, learning about the energy kind of thing. <coughs> So right now, on a full cycle of 24 magnets, we're only hitting 12. So if you listen to that, that's 12 bangs per revolution. Twelve bangs. It'll be great when it's 24, because it'll be so more efficient. And plus, it'll have a lot more pulling strength along with the both PMHs. Yeah, the two. So, all right, guys. Um, I think I think I about told you everything I need to tell you guys. This thing's been running. Uh, the wheel wheel's turning. It's just going to get faster, better. We'll start to get into it now with the 27 to the 30 um, to the 30 hertz. And I guess I have to go back to that paperwork that I printed out. And we'll go back to the frequencies here of sound. And I wrote my notes for my Schumann here. So we'll get into Schumann resonance in Earth's atmosphere, areas. Uh, LSR area set of a spectrum of peaks in the Earth's electromagnetic field spectrum. SR are global electromagnetic resonance generated by excited 
by lightning discharges in the cavity formed by the Earth's surface and ionosphere. So you can see the fundamental mode of that is 7.83 hertz. So that's what we're going to shoot for. And then we're going to build the capacitance up in the inside of that. And that'll be reactants. We'll catch the back EMF off of that from what the ground is going to move the energy around it and tap into the Schumann. Because we're going to have to make some, we're going to have to make some good capacity or good uh, static induction in the ground to tap into that Schumann um, wave. Once we tap in the Schumann wave, we should be able to tap the system and maybe get unlimited power. So, you guys.